Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I have a I have a question for you. Are you gay? I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. It's not a yes or no question. The only <laughs> the answer is yes. That that's the only acceptable uh, uh, answer. So um, uh, I got sent this uh, uh, link about this uh, DCYA book about uh, Jake Hyde, Jackson Hyde. Oh my gosh. I've got to tell you, I really do not know the DC universe very well. I thought Aqualad was Aquaman's son. It's Black Manta's son. Spoilers. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, um, uh, I mentioned this to Ethan during the live stream, and we kind of went over it. And then at one point, I just tapped out. I was like, I, I can't take this anymore. But I had some time. And uh, so let's just jump right into it. But before we do... Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. Uh, we had a huge day yesterday getting back into the promotion game and live streams. So uh, we're at 78,000 with uh, 1,600 backers. Spendables Go to Hell uh, is still chugging along quite nicely. And uh, Pandemic, uh, this is the second one, just crossed uh, 10,000. Uh, so anyway, um, let's jump right into it. Aquaman's sidekick gets a coming out story from the creator of Blue is the Warmest Color. You brought me the ocean. Is it... <laughs> Sorry. I skimmed this. I, I didn't notice things like the title, even though it's right there in front of my face. You brought me the ocean is a queer YA, that's redundant, graphic novel from DC Comics. Um... Polygon continues our look at the coolest comics coming out this summer with an exclusive preview of You Brought Me the Ocean. This, this sounds like a fa This sounds fake. I was just watching this old movie called Soap Dish, uh, and it sounds like like one of the names of the, like the fake of the rival soap operas for that fictional soap opera on that show. A new graphic novel inspired by the DC Comics character Aqualad, Aquaman's sidekick and not son, like I thought until I read the, the wiki, which was very, 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 very long and extremely confusing. Um, Jake Hyde, I guess he's called Jackson Hyde in the mainstream DC universe, the second Aqualad to grace DC continuity, grew up in a New Mexico desert town with... A, with <laughs> Uh, this is just making me flash back to, uh, do you remember Border Town by, uh, what was it, Eric Esquivel? Um, <laughs> they like to set, uh, SJWs like to set books, books in Border Towns and then write them like no Border Town ever. I mean, he, even like Ignited. Phoenix is not exactly a Border Town, but it's a Border State. And like, there's almost no Hispanics at all. Um, and like every person is another uh, a, a race. It's it's like a beer commercial or something like that. Um, the second Aquila, okay, so grew up in a New Mexico desert town with a mother who never told him much about his father, but tried to keep him away from large sources of water as much as possible. Jake realized he was gay right around the time he realized he could control water with his. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, I can control water, sexy water, like, like what is, these things have completely nothing to do each, with each other. It's like saying, he finally figured out his times tables past seven times seven, the same day he discovered that he was gay. <laughs> like, correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't discover your, like manifesting a superpower like that's something hey that happened on whatever march 13th 1987 like <laughs> is anyone like and that day i realized i was gay i did I, I would get the feeling people would kind of it would be in the ballpark of maybe for a while and then it's like oh yeah up oh, yep <laughs> but i don't think anyone would say and that's the day it's like you might say like that's the day it was definitely confirmed and there were no take backsies no penny taxis on that one uh, <laughs> uh but um <laughs> i gotta read this whole thing around jake realized he was gay right around the time he realized he could control water with his mind <laughs> as if being a teenager wasn't complicated enough <laughs> <It's> stupid 
<laughs> Ow. It's that nexus of self-discovery that writer Alex Sanchez and artist Julie Morrow focus on in You Brought Me the... <laughs> you Brought Me the Ocean. And Sanchez and Morrow are well equipped for the job. Sanchez's work in Queer YA, that's redundant, Rainbow Boy. Really? Rainbow Boy. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh, this feels fake. So the two titles in his queer YA book are Rainbow Boys and... Bruh. <laughs> Give me a second. So hot. <laughs> Fuck. Excuse me. So... So hard to say, oh my, uh, has earned a slew of awards. And Maro has the similarly award-winning blue is the warmest color. These feel like they are generated by an algorithm. You brought me the ocean. Blue is the warmest color. You brought me the warmest ocean blue. Like, <laughs> adapted to film in 2013 under their belt. In You Brought Me the Ocean, Sanchez and Morrow take Jake through a journey of struggling to tell his mom and best friends about his growing superpowers and his growing relationship with the cute and outgoing captain of the swim team, Kenny Lu. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It should be Kenny Martinez. Like, every other person should be as or Pez or Des. Like... Like, it's, you're in a border town, and you got, like, the gay black kid, and then the captain of the swim team is the gay Asian kid. Like, come on. It's a lovely looking book, and thanks to DC, you can read eight pages of it right now. You Brought Me the Ocean hits digital and retail shelves on June El Nueve. So, oh gosh, I wish this was, like, in a comicsology. So, um, so it's in set in Truth or Consequences... New Mexico, and it should be called Truth or Consequences about your emerging sexuality, comma, New Mexico. Um, so this is the narration. Miss Archer is my history teacher, my favorite teacher. Let's remember what type of teacher she is. She's always encouraging us to be ourselves. That's certainly the job of a history teacher. Be yourselves, the declaration was signed on this date. Believe in yourself. On December 7th, Pearl Harbor was attacked by the Japanese. <laughs> um, so she's, she's teaching a, uh, I'm sorry. And of course she looks like this. Um, I would describe this as MMA Miss Frizzell uh, from the Magic School Bus. Um, Miss Archer is my history teacher, my favorite teacher. She's always encouraging us to be ourselves. Franklin Roosevelt was a risk taker. He led America out of the Great Depression and toward victory in World War II. Believe in yourself. So then we meet, I gotta see what it says in this shirt. Human body is mostly water, truth or consequences. Okay. Uh, so the uh, the green-haired gay Asian captain of the swim team in this border town. Miss Archer, can you talk about FDR's wife? I read Eleanor Roosevelt was a lesbian. Is that true? I've known Kenny since middle school. But seeing how kids picked on him kept me from becoming his friend. Interesting question, Kenny. It's documented that Miss Roosevelt and journalist Lorena Hickok exchanged passionate love letters, but we'll never know the true extent of Eleanor and Lorena's relationship. It might have merely been a deep friendship, or who's to say where Miss Roosevelt might have been on the spectrum of sexuality? Gender and sexuality are fluid, like water. Get it? <laughs> love can take... Many forms. I'm, I'm sorry, what, 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 what subject do you teach? History. History. <laughs> um, and then, 
cliche of all cliches. Who's the bigoted asshole? It's the blonde or the uh, the red haired, freckle faced white kid. Oh look, he's got he's got a little storm coming out of his little racist head. Um, uh, she says love can take many forms, and then he says like gay freak forms. <laughs> Who is this? One of the newsboy legion. <laughs> I like now. Please notice the very uh, awkwardly placed cactuses that are like right outside this Fred Flintstone house window. So he throws a watered up uh, a paper, uh, and it, it hits uh, the uh, gay Asian kid on the shoulder. And then uh, he says, "Honestly, this takes a lot of coordination. You're gonna throw a piece of paper while giving a high five to someone you're not looking at." And then he says, kill the queer. And then uh, get ready for the, okay, so I'm sorry. First of all, I'm completely distracted by Jake's uh, uh, Disney eyes. Um, this is a thing in, oh. Oh my God. <laughs> and also in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Let me look up the population of that right now. Sitting in front of the racist, red-headed, freckle-faced, white kid is a young woman in a hijab. <laughs> Truth or consequences, New Mexico. Got a population of 6,475. <laughs> but apparently, quite diverse. You have green-haired gay Asians, you have Disney-eyed gay black kids, you have a young girl in a hijab. <laughs> and so, noted, remember when the, the cactuses were established? You got the cactuses. And then he says, Why don't you go hang out in the cactus? You'll fit right in with the pricks. Oh my. And then uh, he throws it back and hits him right in the forehead. And then the... Uh, the <laughs> Muslim girl is completely just delighted. And then he says, You just signed your death warrant, freak! Um, that's, that's a murder threat. <laughs> Rampant homophobia and murder threats and women in jobs and green-haired Asian kids in a border town of 6,400 people and Miss Frizzell is getting ready to go fight the lead character from The Last of Us 2. Um, and then she comes over after hearing the death threat and says, As you each mature into your sexuality, hopefully your minds will mature too. Zeke, stay after class. Look at those hands. Um, so, uh, so I was getting distracted before, but uh, I've, I've said... One of the good things about reviewing 3,000 comics over three years is when I first started when I po point something out people would say that's just a one-off and now three years in it's like a 57 off and everyone's like yes I totally agree there is a not planned but actively I don't know active scheme to feminize all or most black male characters you can find um, uh, Jackson Hyde was introduced 10 years ago in uh, the, uh, not the New Warriors, I'm just gonna call it the New Warriors, the Young young Justice. And uh, looks pretty tough, pretty masculine. Um, and then right here, he looks basically like Simon Phoenix. Um, and then even like the most femmy he might look is like right there, but really just still looks like a normal kid. Then all of a sudden he's like 48. You know, 40, he's like a 48-year-old uh, Korean war vet in the 70s, um, mad at the, you know, the neighbors or something like that. But he looks kind of like the regular tough hero. That's not a thing anymore. Right now, it's basically um, over and over again, you're going to see uh, uh, black men and, and black boys reduced to support. Uh, they're going to tend to be passive, um, submissive, uh, basically helpers. Look to the helpers. Uh, they're always just kind of in the background waiting for the woman leader to tell them what to do. And it's a pattern. It's a pattern of behavior to which I say, why? Why do you constantly feel the need to show black men as submissive? 
and effeminate. Uh, so, um, so then uh, <laughs> this uh, woman is comforting the uh, gay, the green-haired gay Asian swim team captain. Those creeps are so annoying. You okay? Yeah. Don't let the goons get you down. See you at swim practice. What? Are there boys and girls on the same team? Um, so then he notices and she goes, uh, this, uh, oh, she looks like she's Asian. <laughs> it's a very, very diverse town of 6,400. With all the flack he gets, you've got to admire Kenny for not being scared to make waves. Yeah. I wonder how he works up the nerve. So, you want to go work on our college application? What? Sorry, sorry. What? You want to go work on our college applications? How does that work? Hey, you write down your last name. Oh, I already did. Ooh, getting ahead of me. Okay, now write down your first name. On it. Okay, so I've written mine too. Now, middle initial. Oh, I wrote my full ones. You're trying to beat me in, <laughs> that's another thing. Um, can we do it some other day? I, um, want to ask Miss Archer for a recommendation letter. Great idea. I'll go with you. Wait. Miss Archer, your, your history teacher. Of, of the class you just walked out of. You're gonna go talk to her. What? What's going on? Um, oh, um, I wanted to talk to her alone? Oh, okay then. See you later. Uh, so then we cut to swim uh, practice. Actually, Miss Archer had already written me a recommendation letter for Miami. I should have told Maria the truth about why I was staying after school, but what was the truth? Kenny, can you help O'Brien with his breast? <laughs> what is this expression on O'Brien? Oh my gosh. Oh, jeez. Okay, this is where I tapped out before. Usually I say, please look at the screen, but I don't want to be blamed. Just maybe please don't look at the screen. If people saw me talking with Kenny, would they call me a freak too? Wait a sec. Hey, you want to join the team? Huh? Um, no thanks. This is, this is a very exclusive team. You have, uh, I don't know, seniors, fifth graders, girls on the boys swim team. If someone makes eye contact, you just... The, the natural thing is to assume they want to join the swim team. Oh, what? what, what, what? Um, so he's like, I'm not a stalker. It creeps me out during rom-coms when the guy stalks the girl. If I want to talk to him, I should just say sup. But what would I say after that? <laughs> he's walking down downtown, truth or consequences, New Mexico. Norma's Cafe. Waves to Norma. I ought to just go home. Why are you following me? Huh? I just, um, wanted to say, I'm listening. Well, I think it's great how you stand up for yourself. You know, against the haters. Thanks. And you're telling me this because... I was just curious. Are you really, you know... Gay? Sure. Why? Are you... <laughs> <laughs> He's like at all the sweat shooting out of his head. Um. Me? Um, never mind. I better go. Wait. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. It's just. I'm not interested in a hookup if that's. Huh? No, that's not. Then what is it? I guess. Would you like to hang out sometime? Hang out? And do what? You know, go on a hike or something? Maybe this weekend? A hike? Okay, sure. A hike. <laughs> so, so, what does it have to do with DC? What does this have to do with this uh, a character? Not really much at all. This is just cliche 2020. Um, every other person is another ethnicity. Pretty much is everyone is assumed to be gay unless they're said not to be. The racists, homophobes, and bigots, and everything evil are, of course, going to be white. The, the uh, uh, diversity is going to be statistically impossible. I'm not just saying, well, maybe for the entire school, but this is like all within like a couple tables. 
You got the gay black kid. You got the gay Asian kid with green hair. And then you got the Muslim. She's probably gay too. The red-headed kid giving a high five is probably trying to hide his gayness. This is like the one kid who has to grow up and repopulate the entire town. Um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, I don't got much to say besides just current year cringe cliche level expert. Maybe that's a video title. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Uh, links are in the description. Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. Doing very, very good. Uh, Spendables go to hell. Chugging along quite nicely. Hey, maybe that's what this book should have been called. Chugging along quite nicely. Uh, and uh, then uh, Pandemic. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.